Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, good. So before we start, I'll just do an interview on what, I'll just do an introduction on what this is about. So the purpose of this okay. interview is to let you share about your life and your experiences so the people who are watching at home are able to pick up something or find, up, find a new perspective and basically just get some kind of value out of it. And okay. so following off that, um, can you introduce yourself briefly? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Noriel. Um, I'm 21 with 18 years of experience. <laughs> so I work as an accountant. I've been an accountant since uh, 2002 up yeah. to now. So. Wow. Okay. So do you have a, like a family or anything like that? Yes. Yes. I'm married. Um, I'm married. So to my beautiful wife, Glenda. So, mm. so you haven't had kids yet? Uh, no kids yet. It's in the works. I see. It's in the works. Yes. <laughs> So for your career uh, wise, so you're working for a Texas company? Yes, I work for a company called Lehigh Hansen. It's part of the Heidelberg Cement Group, one of the global leaders in the construction industry, especially yeah. in the cement and aggregates ready mix materials. Okay, okay. So it's like a building, that kind of company, like an industrial company. Um, yes, it's a global leader, as I've said, in the cement and construction business. So basically, uh, the company produces aggregates, construction materials, ready mix products, and hot mix asphalt, you know, used for in, in the construction industry, uh, and especially cement as well. So uh, I see, I see, I see. they've been they've been there for uh, quite a while, more than a century, I guess. Oh wow, more than a century. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. So you're living in the United States right now, currently, right? Yes, I live in Arlington, Texas, part of the DFW uh, Metroplex in Dallas-Fort Worth area. Yeah. How long have you been there? Uh, I've been here in Texas since 2009, but I've been here in the U.S. since I came here to do my master's back in 2007. Yeah. So it's been more than 13 years. 13 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little about like your experiences in America or like the United States. How's it been? Um, it's been quite a ride, I would say. Yeah. So uh, I came here originally uh, doing my master's back in 2007. Mm. So, um, but it wasn't my first time being here. I came here first in 2005 for a business when I was still working for Shell, Shell yeah. part of the Royal Dutch Shell Group. And then I went back to, to Manila, to the Philippines. I stayed there again for another two years. And then I came back here in 2007 to do to do my master's at that time hmm. so um i i would say it's it's been a lot of challenge and at the same time opportunities for me yeah. so um i've learned a lot you know interacting with different people with diverse hmm. people from different backgrounds you know uh, not only on the professional level but personally um i've learned a lot from the people i dealt with you know be it on the professional level working and and on the personal on the personal side, like you know, meeting just some of them, I've heard, I've met a lot of people from different nationalities, you know. In back when we were still doing our MBA in Maharishi at that time, yeah. you know, all of most of the students came from different nationalities. I think uh -huh. uh, at that time we were uh, more than thirty at that time. So from different countries, uh, I think I would say about more than. The ten countries of the time. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So you just, you just uh, mentioned the Maharashtra University of Management, and so you studied with my mom, right? That's like how you you two know each other. Yes, 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 definitely. At that time, so uh, we were uh, actually in our, in our group. Uh, there were four Filipinos of us uh -huh. in that in that batch. Yeah. So our professor at that time used to call us like the Filipino mafia because we, uh, <laughs> we tend to be like stay in one group you know uh, yeah. and uh, Ayuna actually was one of our good friends at that time great friends uh, so we kind of like she was an adopted group to us <laughs> so <laughs> yeah she's been she's been great she's very generous uh, I remember at that time we used to um, whenever we were tired of eating at the school cafeteria we would go out and then go out with her and then 
you know, drive together all the way to the downtown area and then uh, eat there, eat outside. So, oh. see, now I never knew these things. You know, I mean, this is like I'm getting a little no more. And it's yep. actually funny you mentioned the Filipino mafia because um, so I go to a school called Glenfield College in New Zealand, uh -huh. and it's uh -huh. like there's a lot of Filipinos there as well. And like uh -huh. some of our teachers actually call like the massive Filipino group Filipino mafia. So it's like actually it's actually interesting to see that's like an actual thing. Yeah, I think it's it's like uh, I would say if it's like a stereotype or you know people has just been used to calling it because uh, yeah. you know as Filipinos we tend to have like a strong bond you know yeah, among ourselves. So um, I think it's it's because I would say like the qualities that we have we are like very uh, family oriented. Yeah. So. We're very family oriented and we tend to galvanize, you know, on those values. Mm. And um, we're, as, as people, you know, we're also very entertaining people. So whenever you uh, are in the Philippines, you know, a lot of people are very hospitable. So, yeah, I actually definitely do feel that. So you said you were 31, right? No, I'm actually 39. So I was just, I was teasing you. I said I'm um, 21 with 18 uh, years of experience. I just heard you. I was like, <laughs> man, this is working. I was like, what's going on here? Right, um, yeah. 39. Um, so, to you've lived a very long life. Um, so, what is the biggest accomplishment in your life so far that you feel like? Um, I would say the biggest accomplishment I have had, you know, is to know the people from different backgrounds, you know, from different. Uh, different culture I would say that's the greatest accomplishment I've had because you know you could you could accomplish you know financial wise you know on your professional career wise but um, you could be lacking like those interactions from different people from different backgrounds so I mean it's not an indicator like if you succeed financially or you know in your career that I mean that's subjective for me I mean people could view it differently but for me uh, I would say the greatest accomplishment I've had is knowing people from different backgrounds because I've learned a lot from their experiences, you know, from the conversations and of course from their uh, culture. So. Yeah, and having a, like a different perspective on life through the PR, yes. people yes. is very important, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, that opens up your perspective, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So comparing your home country of Philippines, and you've like lived a good amount of your life in the Philippines, right? Um, yes. Uh, for 25 years, I've lived oh, yeah. there. Okay. So yeah, you this is it is your genuine home, and now you've been living in the USA USA for around like 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like are the differences between the like the, the severe differences you've noticed? Um, I would say the main difference would be uh, you know Philippine Philipp in the Philippines, the culture is definitely family oriented. Mm. So even the the people are expecting you to stay in one household, even though they are get they get married you know they have kids oh. so they tend to stay with the parents with the grandparents mm -hmm. uh, i mean it's it's normal it's normal part of the culture but here uh in the u.s you know people are very independent yeah so they are trained early on you know to be um independent and to stand on their own so legally when you reach 18 years old you're expected to go out from your uh, parents yeah and you know, the peer, parents are also training their children, you know, to be in such a way that they could live their life independently and be, I would say that the culture is more individualistic. Oh, so it's nice way to say it. So people tend to be uh, identified as an individual on their own, mm. you know? So. Oh, actually, that's actually a nice, nice way to say it, individualistic. And I think that's one of the biggest things I noticed as well from my side, because I come from Mongolia, and as you said, it's very family-oriented as well. We care a lot about our families and our cousins and uncles and all about that. And I come here, and it's like the the relate like the, the family dynamic between like a westernized family and like our family is very different. And Absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's very different. And uh, I would say there's also similarities, you know, because in the Philippines, um, we we are also trained like early on to uh, to be who we wanted to be when we grow up. So oh, yeah. early on, also you know we are trained to be like okay when you grow up, at least you have this training, you know, be it on a personal level or you know professional wise. So we are we are also guided you know by 
our parents and by our elders, you know, in the yeah. family, siblings and all that. So definitely. So I'm about to graduate high school, right? And it's mm-hmm. the last year of high school and all that. I'm thinking about my life and all, where am I going to go and all that stuff. And what was your like mind process when you were graduating high school? Like, um, I would say at that time, you know, I was very young. So mm-hmm. I didn't really think, you know, much of my future. So I was encouraged, you know, to take up accounting because at that time, I think we had like a career uh, symposium at that yeah. time in school. So most of the alumni coming from the school uh, held a group organization. I, I think they, uh, they organized like a symposium to, to share their experiences, you know, to the graduating students. Oh, yeah. That's right. Right. And, you know, they would describe differently, you know, like if you take this career path, you know, what expectations you would be yeah. expecting, you know, what, mm-hmm. what type of professional career you would have. So I was encouraged at that time, you know, when they did that talk and I think I would say the rest is history. So, yeah. Okay. I see. So you, you were able to like hear from the experience of people who graduated before you and what kind of careers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that actually, you know, reinforced my, uh, my goals, I would say. So I was not professionally. My first choice actually was to be, a civil engineer, you know, engineering. I didn't really think of, you know, having accountancy as my first choice of professional career, career. But, but you know, that's how, I think that's how it turned out. So I would say I, I would say I'm still thankful. You know, I took accountancy because you know there's a lot of opportunities that you yeah. would have if you if you are in in the accounting field. So you you have a lot of options. Yeah. So like personally, I'm doing like I'm doing a like a business degree combined with an engineering degree because I kind of oh, don't know what part I want to do because I've been doing like math and physics all that for the entirety of my childhood, and then recently I'm like, oh, business is really fun, so I still don't know which way I'm going. So I'm just taking it both. To see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good thing. I uh, I would say you know you're in good hands because your mom has business background and yeah, yeah absolutely you're connecting to different people. You know. The mentorship that you that you will have, yeah, I would say it's, it's a great advantage, you know, you know, in deciding on what to pursue. Hmm. But my take my take on that would be like as long as you enjoy what you're doing, and then you will get it, you know, you will yeah. get it in the end. So, sure. so since you said, you said you've been um, working for a long time abroad, right? You've been working in the U.S. What is like the beauty of working abroad, like living, working in a different country? What's the best thing about it? Um, I would say that broadens your horizon, you know, working abroad, working internationally, mm-hmm. that broadens up your horizon. You get to um, work with different people from different background. You get to know a lot of different processes, you know, that are unique mm-hmm. and yeah. unique to the country that you work with. Mm-hmm. And to the company that you work with. I mean, it, I would say it's still subjective because it depends on, on the company that you will have to work on. You know, different companies have different cultures and different processes, different regulations and all that. But the biggest advantage I would say is that widens up your perspective in life, yeah. you know, prof- both professionally and uh, on a personal level. Mm. So, um, Do you often visit the Philippines or is it like... Not, not, not so much. Um, I was there last year, but oh, yeah. you know, I, I was there last year. Um, this time because of this pandemic yeah, thing, pandemic. you know, all my travel plans have been put on hold, set aside. Yeah. So Definitely. I haven't had any plans yeah, yet it's not been this that year. Mm-hmm. Especially in America, America is not really doing that well. And it's still going on in America, right? Yeah, we're number one in terms of confirmed cases because also of the increased testing that has been going on, you know, statewide, nationwide. And, um, you know, it, it, it is different situation in different states at this time. Oh. And because of, you know, of the political situation here and with the upcoming election. So I think a lot of, a lot of these have been politicized. So Yeah. I, I kind of realized you, like, I know you're inside it. So it's like really, hectic but from outside it's like also pretty crazy as well <laughs> yeah 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 oh but definitely but uh, i've been staying 
staying home. So we are working from home since March. So it's been more than wow. seven months. So eight months. Mm -hmm. so you've been working, you've been at home for eight months. That's crazy. Yep. Damn. I, I mean, with I, with the advent of technology, it helps a lot. You know, you could be you could be somewhere, and then you could be working for a different company. So <laughs> I don't know how I fucking handle eight months. We do we had like a two month lockdown here. And I almost went insane. Like that was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, we didn't really have like a lockdown per se. Oh, yeah. Um, it it was like more of an regulated, um, I would say regulated instructions coming from the county. You know that supervises different cities, so they would issue these directives saying that okay, this type of business can is not an essential business, so this will be deemed as closed. But all those you know essential businesses that people would need they stayed open nice. but but most of the uh like restaurants at that time i think they were closed since they closed and, and gradually opened you know i think they gradually opened back in uh in may oh, i see i see okay well to finish off the i guess the interview um what would be your one big advice that you would want to give to young people who want to study abroad um i would say of course, you, you need to hold on to your goal. Mm -hmm. You need to be persistent, persistently focused on what you need to achieve. And you have to have that hope and dream that you can, you know, you'll be able to make it. Mm -hmm. Because if you, don't, if you don't have that hope, no matter how, no matter how um, focused you are, yeah. so at some point, at some point, you know, you will give up. But don't lose that hope, you know. Think, think it as a way that at the end of the day, whatever you're trying to achieve, you know, will shape you up as a person. Hmm. That's actually really nice advice. Thank you so much. So thank you're you welcome. Gabriel, for the interview. That was actually a really nice interview we had. And yeah, you can, you'll be probably be able to see it on upon our page very soon after this interview. So yeah. Oh, thank it's you. my pleasure. My pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Bye.